Well, we're we're Jack Brotherhoods, and we're a gay dad rock band from Glasgow, and I'm I'm Logan. I'm the I'm the singer. Is, is that it? You gonna say anything else? Like what? You probably just no. That's me. No. Okay. Hi, I'm I'm Sam. I play the bass guitar in Jack Brotherhood. Yep. I'm Ray. I'm a Pisces, and I play the lead guitar in Jack Brotherhood. And I'm Jamie, I'm the drummer. Uh, I was going to say I'm the drummer, I play drums in Jack Road. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, would be accurate. Yeah, it would be, yeah. Where's um, the line? That's true. Uh-huh. Expanding out to Egg Shaker and Tambourine in recent months, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, and uh, backing vocals. I didn't, didn't have for years, mate. Still can't sing, but yeah. <laughs> You've got a lot going on. you got too many responsibilities. I know, yeah. yeah. Uh, how did you guys all meet? Well, we've known each other, uh, some of us, in school, and uh, Jamie uh, came along a little later. Yeah, so I was in another band and recording an EP in Ray's bedroom when they had a bedroom recording studio, and it was just during one of the sessions, he was like, oh yeah, I've got this friend who's wanting to do a solo album, um, but get a full kind of band ensemble for it, so mm. I think we kind of started through some demos, listened to that, and then we got into the rehearsal studio just to kind of practice and see how it all sounded and then we're like this actually works kind of quite well as a band at least that's how I remember it. I don't know whether that like there was an ulterior motive there or no I don't think that's about right I think it kind yeah. of coalesced around I was living in Germany for a while and mm-hmm. uh, when I was doing that um, I was writing songs and I was in I was in bands or whatever um, but this music didn't fit the genre or whatever, which I used to care about, uh, unlike now where <clears throat> I can't be bothered starting any more side projects, so everything will just have to fit within Jack Brotherhood. Um, and uh, I sent uh, the, I sent some to just phone demos over to Ray, and um, I think in my other band I thought people are... You know, I, I wanted to kind of like play music as much as possible, um, which, you know, has occurred to mixed success, uh, if I'm perfectly honest. <laughs> but um, that's kind of how it started. It was like it was like 10 years ago. It's taken a long time to get off the ground. Have you always been making music? Well, uh, since I was a teenager, sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm an older child, so uh, I didn't have a sort of... I had friends with older brothers and sisters that got them into music and my parents aren't particularly into music. I mean, they like it enough. Mm. Um, so I had to kind of parse that world on my own, I guess. And how did you go about doing that? Well, uh, I had friends who had older brothers and sisters <laughs> and, and they and they, and they they showed us uh, music. Also, we are the LimeWire generation. So... Um, I think there was a lot of that going about. A lot of that. A lot of MSN Messenger as well, like sending files illegally across, sending files that we've acquired illegally. Googling the lyrics in your friend's yeah. MSN bio. Lots of WinRAR. Lots of, <laughs> yeah. lots of decompressing files. You're really showing your age, I see. Um, in fact, how did you all get into music? Uh, I can't actually remember. There wasn't, wasn't a specific point where I, uh, like... It's just it's something my parents played, you know, when I was young. Right. Um, I'm not sure Jamie's into music now. <laughs> <laughs> I like I, I do I do recall and Logan's gonna hate this, but I do recall like in the kind of last few years of primary school it was like S Club Seven was one of the, the kind of big bands. No, that's were, that's big class, pop bands. top tier. Oh yeah, but it, get, it gets worse from your perspective because I was what got me into kind of rock music was uh was it Gary Mullen on Stars in Your Eyes? He did Freddie Mercury. Oh, yeah, there it is. Um, really deep from, diving from, early two thousands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was in first year in secondary school, and we ha- went up for one of those induction days before you actually can move up. Mm. And they had a band on performing, and I remember watching the guy playing drums in that band and thinking, "That's just really cool. That's something I want to do." And at that point, I'd played violin for two years in primary right. school. That was one of the kind of music lessons you got. Did you know he played violin? Yeah, learning so much about you. I never knew you played <laughs> violin. I've <laughs> known you for 10 years. But then I got to, I got to secondary school, and the, the mandate was if you played violin, you had to join the orchestra. 
And right. of course, when you move up to secondary school, you want to kind of forge a new image for yourself. So <laughs> it's like, oh, that's really nerdy and stuff. I don't want to be in the orchestra. So I gave up violin. Long story short, I ended up joining the orchestra three years later doing percussion, but, you know, never mind. Mm-hmm. Um, was that a skill issue or was it... Hmm? Why did you... Why did you change instrument? I never, I didn't enjoy violin that much actually. I wasn't, it's, it's a very hard instrument to learn, mm. like, it's, without making it sound like nails in a chalkboard. Um, and I'd seen the guy playing drums and the guy, the other guys playing guitar in the band and I thought I want to try those instruments instead. You can sort of play the guitar as well, can't you? Yeah. You can, you can, yeah. you can play the guitar. I can play chords, yeah. yeah. Now that you know that Jamie has a history in which you can play the violin, do you think you'll incorporate the violin into the music? Please no. <laughs> Maybe not Jamie's <laughs> But someone playing violin. Well, we've had ambitions for quite a while to uh, include other instruments, but it's kind of out with our budget and out mm. with our... I don't know, I feel we, or at least I, maybe, others disagree, have have been more interested in seeing what we can achieve within our limitations rather mm. than uh, adding in the kitchen sink right now, you know? Right. We've, you know, either we'll be very famous one day or we won't be very famous, but we will have enough disposable income one day mm. to to put the string quartet in then. What do you, what do you mean with, like, only using what you have at your own disposal do you think that adds to the music uh, like well for a long time i didn't even have guitar pedals i just had a tuner and i plugged straight in the amp yeah um, so it was it was a lot of just like you plug going into different rehearsal rooms and just like oh no this amp sounds terrible it's like well that's why pedals exist but no yeah and, yeah and yeah then hmm. a year ago a year yeah about a year no yeah a year and a year and a half yeah yeah not hmm. long ago I got some pedals but the thing is i i like that because then it's like well how many different sounds can i get out yeah. of this guitar without pedals yeah yeah you know and and so sometimes i would finger pink sometimes i would strum i always bring up that simon neil quote um because probably simon neil was one of one of two or three guitarists when i was a kid i really got into from biffy Clyro, and mm. uh, he's only well back in the day he had a couple pedals but he said, if I want the guitar to sound louder, I just play it, mm. play it harder. Yeah. And you can see in videos, he's, he's playing that thing with his whole damn arm, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was kind of something that I, that I liked. So do you think these sort of limitations have had an influence on the music now? I think so, because there's a couple songs we've recorded over the years where we've been like, oh, I'd love to have a brass section on this, but we didn't put a brass section on this. Hmm. Right, We've gone as far as even demoing a brass section, but we, <laughs> but yeah, it's never ended up on there. Yeah. But I mean, even to get to a four piece was a lot because I remember your first band, like uh, I, so I followed Logan's like older band cause we were in school together mm-hmm. and they were a three piece and he was ardent at the time that you don't need more than three people in a band. And it was like big rock. In fact, that act was more. If it's good like, enough for Blink One Eighty Two. <laughs> it's good yeah. enough for me. And is this due to you want those limitations? You want it to be more refined and. Nah, but I think over the years, uh, you know, when I was younger, I got real carried away, real easy, which is cool to do when you're young. But over the years, I was like, well, what can we replicate live? Mm. Right. What I mean, sure. I I would love to, you know, record uh, eight part harmonies in a brass section and yeah. and you know whatever. But if you can't, if you can't do either it live or a rendition of it live that works, mm. then it it doesn't to me have a purpose at the moment. Now I'm not saying a band needs to sound the same live as they do on on an album, mm-hmm. but that felt like just a few steps ahead of where we were. So I kind of avoided it. Mm. And uh, in fact, talking about live, how was it for you guys during lockdown? Well, uh, well, there were no shows. Mm-hmm. Famously. We got two rehearsals in, I think, over the space of a year. <laughs> yeah, for about a year. We didn't yeah. see each other a lot. I mean, Logan and I saw each other because we're flatmates, but like, mm. I didn't see Jamie for a long time. Yeah, like six, seven months or something. I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. we did some Zoom. Mm-hmm. There was, oh, yeah. there was a little bit of Zoom. Living virtually. Yep. Yeah. So you're almost on like a hiatus. 
Yeah, but I think you could probably say that for large um, stretches of our, our <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> dare I call it career. Um, we didn't play, we would sometimes only play two, three gigs a year, you know, it was mm. it was super part-time until more recently, and it, I think. Yeah, kind of 2018 onwards, I think, it kind of started to pick up, but before that it was like one show it a year. It felt like just before lockdown we were getting going for the first yeah. time mm. properly, and then it was lockdown. Literally, mm. I think our first headline King Tut's show was January 2020, Yeah, and right. we had releases lined up for the rest of the year, and we had everything in the festival, and gone. And how did you all sort of cope with lockdown? Well, we didn't really. <laughs> I actually loved it. Yeah, yes, I loved it. Loved it. <laughs> Do you know, what? I didn't mind it either, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not, same, a, yeah. not a big fan of lots and lots of people. <laughs> so, so you were thriving. This was a t- yeah. I like got really into running. I did loads and loads of running. Logan actually lived quite close to me. I used to live quite close to me, so we'd meet up and go for long walks when we were allowed to do so. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was it was great, but. And we did speak, like I remember doing Zoom calls. Do you remember? And we also we made that. I remember doing Instagram posts. There's one that was like this, like split into four, but there's all our faces on it. Oh, so we, we met and we sang yeah. like the the steps of Kelvin Yoga Classic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We yeah we did we did see each other. So you're keeping in touch, but how much music was sort of going on at this time? Just some writing or. You only said two rehearsals. Yeah, I mean, Lo- Logan does the bulk of the, I say the bulk, all, all the kind of songwriting and then we just kind of put our own parts to it. So, mm. um, and I think almost all of the EP was written in yeah. lockdown. Yeah? yeah? Is that right? Yeah, I think so because and, and we put out songs in 2020 during lockdown mm. that had been written and recorded before lockdown. So I think everything in the EP was written in lockdown. And do you think that took its toll, like lockdown, do you think that had any effect on how the music sounds and what you sort of produced in the end? I know that this isn't good for a podcast, but no. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, I was very, uh, I was very c- cognizant of artists making dreadful lyrics about lockdown right, yeah. that I had no interest in exploring at all. Uh, That's not entirely true. I remember you were writing that song called "Oh, What a Lovely Lockdown." Sure, I mean but I write. Did not make. I write, <laughs> I write many songs. That's kind of what I have an interest in more. I'm. I when I, I never really, apart from a, a brief stint when I was about fifteen. I don't, I'm really interested in being a guitarist per se. I mm. like writing songs, and the guitar was just the easiest way for me to do that because mm. it's so readily available. Um, so that's what I do but no it didn't lockdown didn't be- I guess it gave me more time to write mm. uh, at some stages but it's not deeply influenced you or nothing I- I'm afraid not I'm yeah. afraid not Tom it was uh, no <laughs> I feel like that's the exact opposite of what most people have said you know which is quite interesting. what might have and in- what what lockdown gave me was a lot of time because I, until last year, worked in hospitality and I would work very long weeks, hours wise, 60, 70 hours, something like this, quite often, not all the time. And lockdown gave me time to read up on things and it actually, it made me quite politicised. I think firstly because we were watching unfold such a horrific chain of events that that were happening as political decisions mm. but were portrayed as forces of nature you know right, and there's yeah. no other possible way this could have unfolded when i you know i think there really there really is um and i i guess being a bit more political maybe led to a song like the housing market uh, which is yeah. It's not Billy Bragg protest song, and it's not Manic Street Preachers rock with politics. I guess it more sort of inhabits a political topic from a more emotional angle. But, you know, we are big emos. (laughs) Political emos. Mm. That's a new genre. I feel like people could push that one. I like it. Oh, I don't know. I think there's a lot of political emos out there. Oh yeah, maybe that's an area I'm naive to. Um, so, would you say right now, 
politics is a sort of core influence on the music? No. No. <laughs> So I, where I, are you drawing? I really, it's, from? Just, it's kind of. You've there's gone. no one. There's no one thing. Like, like there's one. The housing market is like one song where yeah. Logan was just like, and I remember even in the housing market, there's like a lot of the lyrics just came so far apart. Like the bulk of the song is written in one go, and then you would like not be happy with like one of the lines, mm. and like, do you know what would be really funny? We put like a Gulliver's Travels reference in there, and like, no, that's one <laughs> running with scissors. One running with scissors. I don't know the songs very well. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally listening to Running With Censors yesterday. I, it's not on our set list. So I was just like, do I remember how to play this song? <laughs> There's two things, I think. First, life comes at you fast. And I think there are myriad valid ways to write music and reasons to write music for. Some people want a, an accompaniment for their poetry. Some people... Uh, want to put words and music together to convey a story or an emotion some people just want a beat you can dance to mm -hmm. and I think that's all totally valid um, and I have employed all of those at times over the years I guess what goes quite well hand in hand is that this is our debut EP it's the first time we've, we've managed to uh, get ourselves together and I guess maybe as a result we kind of wanted to show a range of of what we could do sonically and lyrically life comes at you fast and um, sometimes you're bummed out sometimes you're not or you know and and for me anyway I feel like I'm, I'm quite like a in the throes of change kind of guy um, I have like hobbies that come in and out mm -hmm. and things that change and I quite like that our EP has songs on it with quite disparate um, influences inspirations there is one that's kind of more political uh, there's one that's quite maybe more personal experience there's a couple of um songs that kind of uh, write little vignette stories almost um, and there's a, there's a song or two in there that's just kind of dumb fun in a way and I think that that comes together to show a more rounded portrait of a character of this of the character of Jack Brotherhood mm. uh, than you know every song is influenced by politics or every yeah. song is influenced by uh, gee, I sure am bummed out. Mm. It's, it's deep. It's got its nuances. I don't know if it's deep, but it's got its nuances. <laughs> I'll, I'll agree to the second. Um, taking it back a second, you said that a lot of the songs are sort of written in one go. I'm paraphrasing, but it was something along those lines. Some, Is that? Yeah. I mean, generally the sort of working methods that you sit down, you get it down, and that's it. Or how does it go? I think there's more than one working method, but oftentimes some songs just come together and then other songs are a mishmash of like older songs or like older ideas, mm. but just reframed and reconstituted in a new way. But yeah, oftentimes we have um, like a work in, prog work, in, work in progress kind of folder or now maybe two or three work in progress folders on, right. on like a Dropbox somewhere. And it'll just be Logan sending phone recordings. Don't fucking hack it. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing good on there. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> There's nothing good on there because it's all on the EP. Yeah. It's all fucking in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's like two parts of the songwriting process, which is like I write song at home by myself on the acoustic guitar largely. And then right. there's what happens in the, and then how that develops into the full band mm. and uh, just as there are myriad valid reasons to write a song for, like I said earlier there's so many different ways actually Taylor Swift uh, did an interview on this where she said something that I really related to yeah um, I mean it's not a deep or anything but she's she's sometimes you sometimes I sit down and I strum the guitar and I sing over the top of it and it's like I'm playing a song that I've known for years and even that as I as I play it for the first time ever I, even some of the lyrics come straight to me 
Mm. And I then sort of have to, like a listener, have to pick at the lyrics that are there and think, what's this song about? And that's then how the rest of the song comes about. Because it's almost like I've listened to someone else's song. <laughs> but sometimes I'm plugging away at it for months and I'm getting absolutely nowhere. Right. Right. It's really interesting. I mean, I'm not musically uh, talented at all. I love listening to people talk about music. I'm very fascinated with how people tackle it. And uh, so when you, you're you saying you pick up a guitar and then you start to attempt to create something and sometimes you just find it as you're doing it. Well, this is the thing Taylor Swift said, is like you have to work at it, right? Mm-hmm. And, and and you sit at the, well, she sits at the piano and she does it, she can do it like a job nine to five and get absolutely nothing out of it. But mm-hmm. one day, for whatever reason, it's like I've just written three songs and it's Taylor Swift. So when Taylor Swift writes three songs, it's like, three international bangers you know what i mean like it's not like mm. you know so if if you could like uh then play that out on a sort of microscopic scale mm. that, that would be me <laughs> right okay. um very modest but That's yeah really usually nice. i i just strum the guitar i mean mm. i think latterly more recent i used to just uh play chords maybe not in the first ever uh chord pattern you learn uh, when you learn the guitar maybe I play it in a slightly different style with a couple different notes thrown in but mm-hmm. I play chords mm-hmm. and I sort of sing a melody over the top in garbage lyrics and uh, eventually some of the lyrics stop being garbage some of them <laughs> don't um, but latterly I think I got a little bit some more some up on record as garbage <laughs> <laughs> no, latterly I think I got a little bit more into riffs and an actual guitar parts right but that that's a i would say a pretty recent development mm. I, th- I think what was um i was a bit later to music i only joined the band in like 20 17 17 that's five years right. ago that's five right. years ago that's half a decade so yeah so i just recently i, I had <laughs> more recently we can wind it back <laughs> Let's not worry about details. Um, You've been playing the bass five years. Five years. Wow. Like, so you, you basically picked up the bass when you joined the band, didn't you? Yeah, there was actually a time I went into Logan's bedroom. I was going to play the drums, and then... Ah, oh, right. And then... Not in the band. Not in the band, okay, just, not, for, just, just for fun. Like, really, ah, I, see, no, no, I see, I see. Yeah, just, just as, as a guy. Right. Yeah. 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 And then <laughs> Logan was like, oh, yeah, that's interesting. Have you thought about you know, the bass guitar instead? <laughs> And uh, and then we went into Logan's room, and it was Ray and Logan, and they were you know playing music. And then Logan was like, "Okay, you need to do five, and then zero, and then seven And I was like counting along the fretboard, <laughs> like proper like, oh. <laughs> like this, this was last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awful. Anyway, what I was gonna say was. I kind of, I'd never thought about it before, but I think I'd thought that I, I would have imagined that when you write a song, when someone writes a song, it's it's a, a process from you know sort of A to B. Mm. You know, they, they'll write they'll write lyrics and put it to music, or yeah. the, or the other way around. But it's a kind of like linear and very set thing. Yeah. Whereas uh, what Ray said earlier about um, parts of music getting fitted into other songs mm. is what seems to happen not all the, uh, often but it's more like a kind of smorgasbord that you're, right. you're constantly it seems to me like a constant churning out of like things that say you're creating or writing down and then you're kind of picking and choosing and mm. bringing it together you're constantly creating all these different pieces and sort of fitting them in as if you're it, creating your own jigsaw puzzle sometimes, in sometimes, real time yeah it's like that yeah. sometimes it's a surprise sometimes, sometimes oftentimes like the parts that I write because when we're rehearsing in a studio they'll like relative, be relatively in tune but you won't really hear the finer details or the finer notes of like any parts that I've written mm. and then relatively relatively sometimes you'll just end up in the studio and I'll like be like oh we still have this part to record and then we'll record the part and like oh that's the first time I've heard it and it'll end up in the record it'll end up like staying mm. in and it'll be like there's like plenty of lead sections where it's just ended up on the right like heter- the ending of heteronormativity hmm, yeah, might not good, but... might not have been there but I'm just like well this is what I've always played yeah and then it sort of it all fits in whereas by contrast so you know we get all the the work in progress songs in the folder 
and it would just be like we said Logan and the guitar and I'll listen to them and I'll get an idea in my head of what the drums will be for it and I think yeah this will fit quite well together and we're going to the rehearsal studio we start playing it and I play the drums and Logan's like nope no, <laughs> just get that idea <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that is completely wrong <laughs> um, and I think it's quite a, it can be quite a laborious process sometimes working out between us what, what kind of drum parts fit because I'm that's my favourite bit yeah, yeah, but it's, it's when, you, when you turn around and say, it's forget how to play the drums for a moment, to try and yeah. make a part of this song, which is a quite kind of traditional rock drummer is sometimes a bit difficult to do, um, and you, you, your descriptions sometimes are fantastic of what, what to think of, so we had one of our singles, Valedictorian, um, Valedictorian and he was like, imagine you're on like a, you know, a lake that's frozen, and that kind of really, kind of tiny sound and stuff, and try, basically play that, and I was like, Play, play a lake. You're on the other side. <laughs> what was it, Logan? It was like you're on the other side of the ice from the drums that are being played, and that's yeah. what needs it. But and it's just like that, that said, you know. Well, it's we more like if you hear a crack in the ice at the other side of the lake, and how that hits off the the valley around it. Yeah. And it really. And I mean, we'll go we'll kind of try and hash it out for ages. You just said music, right? <laughs> I got an A in high music, but yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> just drop that. Yes. Wow, wow, <laughs> wow, wow! You literally learned to play the instrument like three days ago, and oh, this guy's a God. pro. Jeez. That's to be so honest, we've that's never. So, like, Stephen and I could do a hip hop on the drum <laughs> and It worked right. really, really well. Yeah, and it's it's just yeah, it's just the, the, the kind of nature of the tra- traditional drummer side of me, like coming up with this like four 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 rhythm. To changing to completely what you think fit, or you say fits the song better, I should say, um, and yeah, yeah. finally stumbling in that and being like, oh yeah, this actually works. So that's it's a bit of a different songwriting process from my point of view because I don't, I just obviously kind of put the drum rhythm in. Mm. What, about, what about the bit where Logan will put songs on, and say, yeah, put some songs on, listen to this, and then that makes my life a lot easier. But then no, but that's <laughs> not how it goes. It's yeah, listen to these, and then maybe it's like, oh, listen to these, it's all very nice. And then about three days later. It's have you listened to them yet? <laughs> yes. You know, I think it is like a Jack Brotherhood ism. Uh, often when I write a song, I actually have the whole thing in my head like it's a whole band arrangement. Mm. And then I go to the, but you know, I just, I don't, uh, I can't do that. So I just record me playing the acoustic guitar and singing along on, mm. on my phone and whatnot and send it to them. And we go to the studio <laughs> And then they all play it wrong <laughs> from what's been in from what's been in my head, mm. just wrong. Yeah. Um, I see. B- but uh, what delights me and the reason I'm in a band is that most of the time, wrong is better than what I had in my mm. in my head. You're pleasantly surprised. It, well, yeah, every time. And, uh, every time, <laughs> every time. I uh, a little a little secret, you know, for you and uh, you know your your many viewers. Um, and I'm very sorry to Sam and Ray, but actually uh, working with Jamie and getting the drum bit is is like my favorite part of the studio. Um, Watching it is our favorite part <laughs> of the studio because <laughs> yeah. it's it's trying to. Jamie is such a such a brilliant drummer, uh, but very often he just plays the drums or whatever, and that's kind of you know boring to me. <laughs> and 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 uh, some some uh, drums is an instrument too. Is boring. No, it's an instrument. Oh, uh, and drums just like, as an instrument too. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And and just like uh, just playing the drums, like doing a beat, that's the equivalent of always just strumming chords on the guitar. Mm. Always just strumming the chords you learn. Not any nothing. No different voicings. Just the first chords you learn. Just doing drums is that. Mm-hmm. And Jamie's an incredibly creative guy uh, who, you know, I think struggled for a long time to see himself as such, if I may be so bold. <laughs> and um, getting the drums to act like an instrument too comes back to what we said at the start about making the most of what you have, the four instruments there. If you're just going to have two guitars, bass and drums, then you want your drums sometimes to be like, oh yeah, like that drum beat is very distinctive and mm. very memorable. Right. And there's always a weird thing with it as well, where like if we play it in the rehearsal studio, 
and it's a, a kind of um, non-standard rhythm, if you like, for lack of a better term. I'll not of, often feel confident with it because it's not, it's, you know, the drums aren't mic'd up, you're not getting the reverb you do from mm. a live gig. And then we'll play it at a gig and I hear it with the reverb and I get it suddenly becomes really comfortable. Mm. So the next time we go into the rehearsal studio and run through that song again, it'll feel absolutely fine. It's a weird kind of, um, yeah, just a weird effect with it. Where, yeah, at first you're like, I don't feel like this is adding to the song or mm. you know, these drums that I'm hitting in, in this particular order are filling out the song the way I think drums should. But then I hear it live and it's like with the rest of the band as well and they're all mic'd up and leveled and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that, that works. And the drums is kind of integ an integral part of like this, whole, like Jack Brotherhood as a sound. Cause we, there was a moment in the middle there where Jamie decided he wanted to go work in Aberdeen, God knows why. And um, came back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like when you were gone, we, we still wanted to do shows and whatnot. And we mm -hmm. tried to make it work. And we even tried some different drummers. And do you know what? It just completely changed the band. It mm -hmm. changed how the songs came out. It changed the sound and the feel of every song. Yeah, Because otherwise, the sound of the band has been very consistent. So consistent over the years, mm -hmm. um, genre-wise, mm -hmm. level-wise, certainly mm -hmm. energy-wise, yep. um, and lyrically and thematically. <laughs> Jack Brotherhood is one thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's very interesting what you say though about how that was sarcasm. Uh, it's yeah, not. <laughs> just for the for the listeners, <laughs> um, how a song can sort of evolve once played live, and you can mm. then hear it and its full potential. Have you ever like? Do you all have that sort of same feeling where you take it live and then that's when you realize what it is? I don't remember what happens when we play live. No, just pure euphoria zoning out D dizziness slight unease and then i'm having a drink afterwards you seem to handle it from my perspective quite well <laughs> the dizziness Thank probably you. comes from you hitting your head off my crash symbol occasionally that probably adds to the uh the effects sure i'll believe that i quite like it when we play live now like the last few times we played i really enjoyed it actually so it's class when it first started out were you not but well, until about about maybe two years ago yeah i really didn't like it just be panicked and uh, yeah super panicked mm. didn't want to look at anyone and um, didn't look at anyone couldn't really you know when you're like kind of slightly disassociated so you're slightly can relate you can't, can't, <laughs> you can't be like you're like sit in a chair how do you how do i sit right, in a chair yeah. kind of thing you can't and then, enjoy it as well no there was no enjoyment uh, now yeah it's great now you're loving it no, I'm not like, not like, woo. <laughs> Do you know? Now you're bearing it. I'm contained. <laughs> right. Very contained. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. But no, I, I've never thought, um, I've never thought what you've thought. I've never thought, oh, that makes me think very differently. I think it's because all of adrenaline kicks in when you, as soon as yeah. you hit the first drum or from the first chord, you know, and we'll often play songs faster live than we do in the studio. I'll hit the drums harder as well, whereas in, in the rehearsal studio I'll maybe hit them a bit quieter and a bit mm. more timidly. Right. And then when you're on stage, which is lovely. Yeah. Yeah. But then you must appreciate it. Like start back. <laughs> then you feel it. Yeah. Then you feel it. From yeah. Then, yeah. Have you ever had the sort of opposite situation where you've taken a song live and you went, "Oh, that's not really how I wanted that to sound live." I can't name one off the top of my head. I think there's been a couple of times when we would played a song and it's just it seemed okay in the rehearsal studio and then it's just maybe not. Maybe, maybe not got the reaction that we were maybe expecting from mm, right. the live one. Did that happen with the internet? Maybe. I can't remember. No, people loved that. People did love it. Yeah. We just decided not to do it ever again. Yeah. <laughs> That's the name of a song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Not for me. Uh, I know I've answered all your questions, but no, <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, Consistency. I like it. Yeah, I, I, I sometimes go off a song. Uh, and by sometimes I mean I very often go off a song <laughs> but it, not because of live or anything I just I'm just I'm just over it yeah yeah interesting um, and what sort of way like you just I'm just done with it now done with and it. it's frustrating yeah. because I, often we're not <laughs> I think that comes back <laughs> to when I said song. earlier you <laughs> know, our favorite, yeah. when I said earlier I'm a person often in the in like the throes of change hmm Right. I think I'm just like. Uh, so it's not necessarily that you feel like the song's worn out. It's that you've not, you don't relate to it the way that you once did. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just done. Yeah. Right. That's a, also a good way to be though, because then it constantly. It's not for a band. To it's keep not, creating oh, yeah. new content. It's not though. for a band. 
Well, it is for a band because there's change. Yeah. But the fact that we have maybe three to four albums worth of songs and are releasing our debut EP mm. <laughs> is te- testament to the... It could have been the, a whole bunch of different songs. It, they could have, yeah. yeah. It had been six months from in the future from the, the date we did it. It would have been different. Yeah. Or maybe mm. weeks. Yeah. Yeah. We have a whole yeah. new set list, like yeah. post EP. I think now. I'm getting better at that. You are, for sure. I think I'm improving on, yeah. on that. And the fact that we still play You Know I Love You. There's is... songs on the EP that I... Uh, I'm, well, I love all of the songs on the EP and so should you and your listeners. And you definitely <laughs> need to stream it now on all and services. they should listen to it on repeat. It's all linked below. Listeners, check yeah. it out now. And they should also buy the Bandcamp version. That's also linked below. Because... It, damn right it is because uh, not only do we make more pocket money but there is a secret bonus track that you get for ah, free interesting which is actually I think post recording my favourite song on the EP it's a good one yeah, yeah. yeah. it's no, not it's not my favourite but you've yeah. gone off it no I think it's great <laughs> but you know I think that when it was uh, when it was what included in the in the in the main track list to me it made the EP just a little bit too disparate what do you mean by that? I mean sonically and 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 uh, whatever the word for a sonic aesthetic is. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the o- the the, audible, the, uh, the vibe the vibe the vibes were too. Vibe. Right. I know. I just I feel very like I'm on the Zane Low podcast. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, now I should start doing that thing like Harry Styles when he sort of developed a weird American Australian accent or New Zealand because he was talking to Zane Lowe. Yeah, yeah. Um, or uh, what's the one where he's interviewing the your man out of your Red Hot Chili Peppers? Anthony and they Davis. just they, yeah they just talk about vibes on the beach all day. <laughs> but yeah, there was just it was a bit uh, because some of the EP I think is kind of a little bit scrappy and uh, indie and kind of has got influences from bands like maybe Modest Mice and Neutral Milk Hotel and uh, maybe Death Cab for Cutie and some of the EP to me is more um, velvet and uh, all encompassing and and rounded and luscious and is a bit more kind of uh, the national Sharon Mm. Van Etten um bands and, and artists angel olsen as well even just mm. like that kind of more widescreen american thing mm. and uh this song that's a bonus track adds into that it's the most country yeah right country and americana right and yeah. it, it was just a it was a bit much yeah. all in one yeah guy the guy of the ep yeah right I, I, see, I, I think see. we kind of struggled in the studio as well to try and replicate the sounds that we got in the demo and in the rehearsal studio i think we tried different variations of yeah like the vocals being I mean, an octave down an octave both of them together and just you, we weren't really feeling it kind of capturing the same yeah we, we struggled with some stuff that i we wouldn't necessarily struggle with at other times Did we wouldn't really bother with a lot of stuff and even like there was one time when tried to play that because the chorus of that song is essentially like a slide guitar part and at one point we we're like what if what would happen if you just tried to play it like a slide so like put it on your lap steel like mm-hmm. a lap steel kind of thing it, it all just sounded weird so we just played it as we kind of did in the rehearsal and that was a, a song from 20 no, nah, no 16? chance. No it chance. Was. It there was. It wasn't. There was a, a different. I remember listening to. It. Yeah. Maybe later. Sorry. Maybe. Maybe sorry. Maybe twenty eighteen. No. <laughs> nineteen. I, it was nineteen. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's twenty nineteen. <laughs> you didn't make it. Details in. Guess you didn't make it. Um. You really because... tried to gaslight a man out of his own song. There. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ban her own words. I'm now. like. <laughs> I'm pretty forget <laughs> forgetful sometimes, so yeah, that's all right. But it was it was twenty nineteen. It was an hour because it was different though. It didn't have a it had a yeah. chorus that was totally different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, very different. Different song. vibe. And it's gonna end <laughs> up. <laughs> it's gonna end up on our next release sounding totally different again. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned uh, earlier about Bandcamp and how you make more money through Bandcamp. Sure. As making money as a band struggle and today where everything's streamed 
people are paying minute amounts for streaming services and you're getting a tiny little incremental cut from that mm. is Bandcamp something that you are a proponent of you want people to push well, I, forward support artists I'd start by saying that making money is the most important part of, <laughs> of being in yeah. a band as, as being us. a creative across the board yeah. yes yeah. for me that's why I started learning the guitar at age 12 it's yeah. certainly, for me at age 15 it's certainly why I've written money, every yeah. song I've ever yeah. written of course yeah. um, and I, I, I sometimes don't think people understand how important it is mm. that I am able to fund my dream lifestyle yeah you know, it's that. like they don't get it. Yeah, <laughs> that's um, why we're pushing Bandcamp. Bandcamp uh, has recently been kind of bought over um, right. by Epic Games. I don't know if you know this, but the it's people that make us. Fortnite yeah. uh, have bought Bandcamp, and um, it's like a Chinese company, I think. Mm -hmm. And they that we don't know yet. It's no one's quite sure how that's going to impact it and what's going to happen in terms of uh, the deal musicians get from it. Mm. So. Uh, I guess it's a wait and see situation. Right. Certainly, in terms of uh, streams paying paying a small amount of money, uh, you're damn right. And uh, you know we should fight for a fairer deal for artists, as we should you know fight for a fair deal for all workers uh, in this country and globally. And I've certainly been very heartened to see the recent strike action. Um, <laughs> Uh, from the RMT and others uh, feels like the first time in a long time that British people uh, haven't been their usual docile selves and I think that's a good thing that was a very powerful statement I like it <laughs> thank you so much uh, another thing that was mentioned earlier is in regards to your drumming you you described a, like a visual scene to explain the feeling of what you wanted the drums to sound like Mm. can you sort of walk me through that a bit because that's almost it seems to me a little bit counterintuitive or a sort of odd abstract way of attacking an audible art with a visual scene that's yeah what... but it's good to get it's good to be counterintuitive with uh, <laughs> with Jim it's, it's <laughs> good to get him out of his comfort zone because that's when he does his best stuff and his best stuff is, is I think he's probably the best musician in the band actually so you do know violin musicians are strong term. <laughs> oh, I think you're. I think you're a musician. So, you's, what was it you described? A, a frozen lake, right? And the sort of sure. feeling of frozen lake. Sure. So sometimes I think. I think that helps convey the arrangement for a song, right? If I'm just, if they've just got me the acoustic guitar and some singing, I mean that could go off in a hundred directions. Mm. And sometimes you give an image uh, because if you put yourself in that scene you can maybe imagine the soundtrack to that scene a bit easier you know mm -hmm. and if you're in if you're in a if you're in a if you're in a frozen lake then you know things are echoey but maybe not quite in a straightforward way because mm. things are bouncing off yeah. but also it's it's cold and and like uh, how do you convey that in music yeah that yeah and things like that so okay echo is one thing but cold might mean you're playing you're playing the symbols because that's quite a quite can be quite a crisp yeah. sound quite a sharp sound compared to you know you you could have a taw you could have a you could have a snare drum with yeah, yeah. Uh, with reverb on it that was echoey but it, it, it wouldn't feel yeah. as as cold as maybe you know just some icy symbols and oftentimes i'll piggyback off of their discussions because like and run with that i would have yeah i would have i would have like had a completely different idea for that particular song you were seeing then, a nice meadow on a summer's day well yeah maybe not a meadow but certainly like a desert mm. and like a solo person walking through the desert kind of thing and then you hear this and you're like oh damn actually maybe i should play with reflections more right. because there was like a full 18 month strength uh, stretch of Jack brotherhood where there was a running joke where it came to like oh what's ray gonna do for his part and i was like oh just some you know atmospheric swells on the guitar in the background <laughs> <laughs> lots of uh lots of uh volume pedal action yeah, for every song do you use like this sort of idea of imagery a lot 
No. <laughs> there, there, there are three that stuck in my mind. There was, there was Icy Lake. There was one that was like a kind of second-hand bric-a-brac charity shop with loads of couches and stuff in it. So it wasn't a one-off done. thing. Oh, it's no. something that does come up. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the one for the the bonus track, actually, to be fair, the the country description that was the one that I, I you kind of described that and I was like, yeah, I get what you feel with this one. Yeah. Um, for the first time, I was like, okay, yeah, I can see. Yeah. What, 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 finally I submerged in my bullshit <laughs> this, this part of the thing is a two player game so it's like me and Ray are opposite each other and there's Logan to the left Jim to my right and then we, we, he said oh here's the new song we play it and it's like oh cool that's going well and then Logan just walks forward cuts us out <laughs> <laughs> so we're just kind of on the tails like and then they just look at each other for maybe half an hour four minutes <laughs> And really, yeah, just look at each other. Like for a lot of it, it's just Logan just playing the guitar and like, yes, l- like I'm looking like, at you now, Tom. He's just looking, and Jamie's just looking like you're looking right now. So he's just confounded and just like. But at the end of that, usually is a part, and then that yeah. develops into sort of a song. I yeah, think there's I a lot have, of have, have a break for like snacks with you guys working your parts as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's usually lunch time for me, <laughs> and like frustration time for Sam, or yogurt time for Sam. <laughs> but we're not just staring. There's a lot of uh, communicating wordlessly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A lot of communication, yeah. Especially, we're going to the next section of the song now. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's less, uh, less sort of communication uh, that's audible, more sort of cosmic connection, something going on, yeah, a lot of eye movement. Like, sussing out what the, what the parts are, because mm. when, when Jack Brothers first started out, there was a lot of 5 4, 7 4, bars of 3, bars of 2. Random bar of four. It was, it was one song with just a fifteen sixteen verse. <laughs> yep, yep. That was a that was a personal highlight. Um, and it was like Logan those was are all ways of counting a song's rhythm out. Yes, thank for you. anyone at home <laughs> that doesn't know. For me, <laughs> that one was for me. <laughs> Most songs you count to four, and sometimes you don't. Mm. So that that push, pushed me out of comfort zone to begin with. But then, lastly, they've done more kind of four four, which is your, your kind of standard beat. So mm. that's maybe where the, the cosmic connections had to come in to kind of force me out of comfort zone and work out what angle we're going for with the drums and that side of things. Yeah, when I look at your face, sometimes when Logan is describing it, I'm not sure if you're this much. I'm constantly ba- constantly baffled. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I try to put it into like a neutral expression or an understanding <laughs> expression. It's just like I don't know why. Sometimes to it is just pain. Is that as well, yeah. <laughs> a little bit good. of suffering creates the art. It is good, unless yeah. you make a sound, you know, like play the bass. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Can you just stop that? I feel like this turned into quite a therapy session for someone. <laughs> 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 yeah. Sometimes you just need to get off your chest, I understand. Yeah. Um, so now that you've got your album out, and it's available on... Every, all the major, all major streaming, streaming services all major Spotify, streams. Apple, That's Deezer. Right. That's right. Deezer. Yeah. Tidal? Tidal. 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 Amazing. Uh, and more, I'm Amazon, sure. Amazon, YouTube, all the Asian ones as well. There's like Om Shanti and like all this other, like. What other ones? There's loads. There's loads, man. There's like at least seven or eight that I've never heard of before. Okay. But, yeah. You're covering all your bases. But now that we've done that, sir. What's the goal? For you guys what's next what's the next big hurdle where are you aiming maybe different for all of us i don't think we have a goal no no do you have a sort of uh play more shows vision <laughs> yeah there's what's next i don't know if we have a, a like a an all 10 goal. million dollars <laughs> yeah apart from from all those 10 million dollars my yeah. lavish lifestyle being yeah. funded by yeah, people exactly. yeah. on bank in a sustainable way as yeah, in, as in the shows. lavishness needs to sustain. Play more shows is good. Yeah. I think we're good to try and get some festivals as well, where because we, we've got a really loyal kind of fan base of um, people who will follow us to all our gigs. Mm-hmm. See all our gigs in Glasgow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Some in so, Edinburgh. Yeah, yeah, um, but it'd be good. To, where, I mean, we'll occasionally pick up you know one or two new people from there who come up at the end and say, "I oh, really enjoyed that. I was here for like the other band, but loved your stuff, sort of thing." So mm-hmm. festivals would be good where there's more people there. And can discover you. Yeah, that would maybe hear us and 
Mm. Maybe Logan on the piano with Big Jules Holland. That's just what I was thinking. Biggie, Biggie. <laughs> <Boogie. laughs> that was what we want. I think live, I'd love to go on, on tour supporting someone. Mm. Yeah. And it could just be a little tour of toilet venues. That's fine. Um, but I'd really like, I've never, we've never been on a tour and I would really like that experience. So is that sorry what you're aiming for? I guess that would be that would be that would be great. I love actually when we play support slots. There, uh, I mean, a headline show is great, mm-hmm. uh, but you, I think you can only do it one, once in a while um, because it's like who do you think you are? Firstly, mm. uh, but I just uh, support. I just feel like you you get to chat to the band on tour and kind of find out what they're up to, and you you get new people listening to your songs and seeing you live and. Uh, telling you what they what they think, which is nice, bracing, good. Mm-hmm. So I guess that that would be good. And and I well, I want to do an album at some point. Mm-hmm. You know, I keep on keep. Always on. wanted to make an album, and I still haven't. Uh, and certainly since last September, so almost a year now, I've really been on a a real writing train. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so Logan and I live in the same flat and every day relentless guitar playing and new songs and some of the times I'm just like oh, I'm going to have to learn this <laughs> 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 no um, we've we, so basically since we finished tracking that EP we have just like Logan's been writing a bunch of new songs uh, the shows we've played they're all like mostly new songs no we we'll throw in a new song or two a show, but uh, you you spend your hard earned money coming to see us and you, you get the songs you know and love from the EP. And you you get you get to hear the the hits such as they are, you know, and maybe you get a surprise song that we're only ever going to play once live, mm. and that's that's part of the charm. Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Do you have anything you want to plug, show off? You got any gigs coming up soon? Do you have a gig coming up? Uh, no, we don't. We don't want any gigs coming up. We, no, 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 no. What's a gig? We are <laughs> we are planning on getting back to shows in September. All right. So look out for us, I guess, September through the end of the year. And what's the best place for people to get you? Follow Social media. media. Yeah, at Instagram, Jack Twitter, Bro music. But I believe that is also linked down below. As indeed, you're correct. Yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, you've done this before. So yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having oh, us, man. Yeah.